Hey Rap Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to my I Am Future Tips Guide today. Starting off with some obvious stuff, going for a bit more advanced and talking about what I wish I knew earlier. You can definitely save a bunch of time by knowing what to upgrade and what not to, and that's gonna be coming towards the middle and end of this video. So I hope you find it useful. If you do, leave a like, make sure you're subscribed. Go check out my actual gameplay of the game. This brand new survival post-apocalyptic cozy little crafting game is now available on Steam. Let's go. Obvious tip number one, look around the rooftops fully before you start crafting a whole bunch of stuff and make sure you've got the right location you want for your base. You do unlock a item which I'm going to show you in a while that helps you move your base pieces around your construction tables or anything else which is really really useful but in the early days it is going to be a pain in the butt going back and forth between certain areas. A lot of technology required to break down all of this junk is scattered around these rooftops and with just a little bit of foraging and a bit of angling through the debris you may be able to get the unlocks a bit quicker than I did. For example this iron saw and there's a lot of these upgrades scattered around the rooftops. Some you won't be able to access until you've got the first piece or you've maybe upgraded other stuff but that one was pretty easy to get hold of. You can't really miss this next one, it is an upgrade for your backpack so you can carry more stuff and it will basically hover and follow you around, but you never know, if you've been really intent on just gathering lots of resources as soon as you started your game, then you may have actually still missed this. You will be able to increase how many items you hold as you progress through the game, but it is still rather limited and there's different set points that you can do this with the technology that you'll be able to find. You should get to this doorway and once you fulfill what it needs you then be having access to where you've got your drones but the more importantly you've got the moving structures device and this is really really useful especially for picking up planks and metal sheets you'll be able to craft blueprints that will be basically carriers or holders for your planks and metal sheets then use the moving of device item to go ahead and wholesale take the whole lot of them this is obviously much quicker than taking it one by one and even when you get an upgrade later it increases the ability to carry two planks or two pieces of sheet metal but this is still obviously much quicker. Remember to get all of the upgrades you're going to need lots of ink and paper. The paper you find scavenging around and you should be able to use your spray on the plants to go ahead or pull up the plants to get the ink. A big part of the game is supposed to be warding off them creepy critters every night to stop them munching on your crops. You do this by pulling up the roots or the fossils that have been left behind and literally directly removing some of the worms as they edge closer to your food. You can literally pick these guys up but they will cause you some damage and then just plonk them down somewhere else as it will take them a while to get back and you will eventually be able to build barricades. But your main weapon is this spray that you can spray and kill some of the smaller ones although you can't kill these larger pods they're there permanently for now unless there's something else i missed you'll effectively lose crops every night because there aren't that many defenses unless you're going to pay attention and actually guard but of course you need to sleep as that's the only thing that replenishes your health other than keeping your food all the way up high but it's no big deal if you do lose maybe one crop as long as all of them aren't being affected by any of the liquid or any of the roots that have grown close by and you can quickly rip them up in the morning. You'll be able to unlock torches that you can place down and the creepy coolies will head towards the torches rather than your crops which is a good way to stop them as well. The idea is that the less infection you've got so getting rid of all them purple puddles and any roots and obviously keeping them back as far as possible will stop a lot of the worms from getting close to your crops. So if you do notice any puddles or any of the plants close then obviously rip them up or go ahead and use your spray can that you can make to get rid of them. You never want your barricades or defences to go very low low because this would mean having to craft new ones so make sure you've got a few repair patches or if they are getting close to something that's low and you can't repair it then just go ahead and remove the worms by hand. As I said scrap becomes something you really want a lot of towards the end of the game and if you just use a bunch of it to make more barricades then you're going to be grumpy if the worms have eaten through it and you've got to craft new ones. I found it was a good idea to use the terrain like I am here so that you've got your crops growing behind a good line of barricades. Some junk does respawn on these rooftops but limited amounts and very very slowly so even things like planks of wood on the fences will eventually pop back in. Of course the bushes will grow back to either have berries or get the biomass and certain large structures left by maybe other people that have been here before they also respawn eventually it does become a bit of a grind later on for scrap so don't necessarily use all that scrap to barricade and fortify your base it really isn't needed as long as you're keeping an eye on your crops and other stuff 
as the only way to get a scrap for a good amount at least anyway later on is by fishing or sending out your drones for missions. And that actually happened to me after about 6 hours into the game so it's not that far off. One really important thing is to make sure you disassemble as many of these as possible. You'll have microwaves, you'll have these as well as maybe a torch later as well and they're just filled with the crucial supplies you need so that hopefully you don't have to craft some of the more expensive ones. They're super simple once you realise what you're doing, just unleashing all the nuts and bolts. It's kind of therapeutic going through this and dismantling lots of these items. This is how you get a lot of the chips and like I said, plenty of other good resources normally. A lot of upgrades you won't be able to access until you go ahead and upgrade the actual workbenches and pretty much every workbench that you can craft, even storage, can be upgraded. So pay attention to every little tab, especially the upgrade little one, yellow box at the bottom of items. A big part of the game is getting to this and upgrading or repairing the smart tower. This should be one of your primary focuses as this is when you can start sending out a drone to explore other locations and bring back resources. So absolutely utilise it. The drones that you do eventually send out rely on battery power and they've got four or five charges where they can go to different locations each day and then obviously that's going to be important for you getting more resources. You also get the fuel injector from this guy as well and this is how you get liquids including the Electra one which is basically electrified water or oil or substance rather than having to craft bucket loads of it from seawater. Scavenging all these resources is obviously really important and to help you you can get little minions. These are the robots that you can basically get. You end up getting upgrades where you can make them either do building for you or you can get the engineer ones that will help refuel any of your stations so keeping your crypto farm coming which we'll talk about in a while by just generating and giving it enough fuel you do also need to be able to craft the electric station as well and this is kind of advanced stuff this is really mid to late game at the moment currently is getting these guys unlocked and utilize them in the right way but yeah the recharge station is pretty much a hot tub that they'll go and soak themselves in to get more energy for the day and you need obviously a lot of end game mechanics for that I think they're a little bit underdeveloped or quite frankly just not working that well because despite me trying a whole bunch of stuff they never really seem to do what I wanted them to do they often got stuck on debris and stuff as well I think also by the time you unlock this you probably got into a good routine of dismantling a bunch of stuff and so you might not necessarily need it as much but it does look like it is meant to be an important part of the game to help alleviate the grind for resources so especially when you get the engineer one that might be the time that you really want one so you can go ahead and get it to go and dismantle a bunch of stuff for you so farming is important and you rely a lot on having enough of the fertilizer because you need one to have a separate crop plot if the creatures destroy your crops the crop plot will still be there but it will destroy that one crop it might be some time before you can get actual pumps of water where you'll be able to get it from the rooftops until then you're going to have to go down the elevator all the way to the actual dockside to pick up tons of water so make sure you craft plenty of bottles and you should find a bucket near the elevator that will take you down to go ahead and do fishing as well as get that vital water not every crop once it's actually finished growing does give you a seed some of the later ones are a bit more hard so it's always a bit more limited or random chance of getting some but you will have various quests to go ahead and get more so do make sure you pick up the bucket it's right by the elevator you can't really miss it and then go and grab a whole bunch of that water this is where you'll obviously find your fishing rod and two spots for you to go and fish. Unless you get the fishing rod upgraded, you can only really catch two different types of fish and there's one of them that you should really focus on. If you use the worms, these will get the large bug-eyed ones and get five of them and you can take it to the vendor machine and you can swap it for an inventory upgrade. And yep, the large bug-eyed fish is the only one that actually gives you oil or seemingly every time at least when I filleted it at a cooking station. I didn't realise this for a long time because I missed the fillet sign on the actual campfire. This is how you get fish oil and this held me back so much in getting some quicker upgrades because I needed fish oil to progress. The smaller bug-eyed fish just gives you fish meat as far as I could tell from the five pieces that I filleted which is great for keeping your hunger up once you mix it with some lettuce but you do have to use resources to craft the lures for them and it's just not worth it compared to what you need the big ones for. Speaking of lettuce, when you do go to the vending machine, five of the special salads will get you the hammer upgrade. And this is definitely something you should work towards when you're growing your crops. Lettuces are definitely one of the main things, as well as picking up plenty of the golden flowers that you'll come across 
in the bushes really so if you do find a bunch of lettuce seeds you've got more of make sure you plant them more as like i said you should be able to forage a lot for the golden flowers you may want to kind of try and skip eating them the only berries that you really want to be just munching on at this stage is probably the blueberries you will get more benefits out of food when you go ahead and cook them so it's definitely worth combining but you can still go ahead and eat a lot of the biomass like i said if you are running out of food so save them sad leaves save the golden flowers for the actual proper salads that you make at the campfire so that you can go ahead and get that hammer you'll then be able to go ahead and demolish a whole bunch of more of the rubbish and junk lying around to get more resources so the upgrade tower like i said is where you control your drones and yeah you definitely want to be using them on a daily basis as well get as much as you can out of the drone gathering some resources you can upgrade the drone so it's got more cargo space it'll only be able to basically carry one set of planks or one piece of scrap metal or one special box in its inventory but anything else that it finds like it's plastic that will just immediately go inside your inventory you do have special little tiles where it's almost like a point and click adventure where you've got to solve little mysteries i'm not really going to go through this as a tips as i think it's part of the fun of the game but it's all work outable in this one area. You don't need to go to other places to gain access to maybe the cockpit, and I'll leave it at that. So far though, I haven't seen any reason why you would ever return back to one of these places after you've completed it, nothing else respawned or anything else changed as far as I know. Of course, the other main reason you'll be utilizing the drone is to head towards Stan the Holder, AKA the Trader, where you'd be able to buy a bunch of new stuff. And he's got something really crucial in terms of progress through the game they'll sell the eyes or the cores for your minions to go and do stuff also the pump mechanic so you can get water up from the fishing spot to the various pumps that are on the rooftops and the drill bits they are the three most important things you want to buy like sure fertilizer will help you along but you should find just about enough fertilizer to keep going especially if you do some of the other side quests eventually and the drill bits you need to go ahead and get an upgrade for you as well to access the drill arm you might notice it uses something called cryptocurrency don't worry no real life cryptocurrency here just all in game so the crypto maker will just basically generate enough funds for you you don't need more than one of these honestly it's not like you need a whole farm one will do you simply go up to it every now and then and collect the amount of currency that it's generated you will need to place a bio generator nearby and then you've got to connect it up with electricity but it's fairly simple once it's powered up again you can upgrade it as well to generate even more but honestly i had so much towards the end of my six hours that i didn't really feel like i needed to make more than one currency generator just keep remembering to dump biofuel into the actual generator itself so now a few things you shouldn't bother and absolutely should get hold of early don't bother with the press uh, this will basically get all of your scrap metal and combine it so that you'll get sheet metal or it will get some of the biomass and turn it into wooden planks you should have more than enough of that stuff laying around from the trees the bushes or from tearing up a lot of the metal cylinders it really isn't worth the resources in the early days at least anyway focus on other stuff as you upgrade the tower don't bother with the decoder module as that basically unlocks new skins unless you definitely want to change your appearance and get lots of new stuff Honestly, the most useful upgrade was the Meta Network Storage Module. This allows you to appear into any chest that you've got and see all your inventory in one space. Even if you've got a chest in one part of the roof, then you've got some chests in another, you can see, grab and get whatever you want as it shares the same space. It's definitely worth the upgrade. As said, you can upgrade pretty much everything. The crypto farm, the biogenerator, even the cooking station, and it will just give you various different buffs. I would focus maybe on the cooking station upgrade as that's going to help you unlock new recipes. And of course, the crafting bench upgrade, make sure you get that as soon as possible as well. And then obviously you'll be looking at the super tower to get that upgraded so you've got more access to new regions. If you find yourself stuck on not being able to craft certain resources then you will need to get hold of the resource printer it's found on a blueprint on a piece of machinery on the stairways that lead to the main square and so there will be a fair amount of stuff blocking this so you probably will need the drill to go ahead and gain access to it remember you get the drill bits from the trader so as soon as you've got your currency generated go and get them is another piece of technology that you'll need powered by electricity and so at this point you might need to start putting some junctions down so you can split the power because you've only got two slots coming out of the generator and if you're running your crypto farm plus this and maybe the charge station obviously that's free so you will need one of the splitters that you can get 
by getting one of the blueprints and unlocking it. You'll see that you can make the metal girders out of metal pipes and you can make the foam pieces out of plastic. Although I surprisingly have still not managed to find out how to make the foam pieces. I'm guessing it's an expedition that I haven't unlocked yet so I need to go on that. But that's how you get the metal girders which you'll need for late game too. Now obviously a lot of these resources you will find by dismantling a lot of the debris and junk around so a lot of it will give you certain pipes, you'll like, you find pipes on the floor that you just dismantle, light bulbs you'll find in microwaves as well as the torches, that's why it's crucial to get the upgrades for your arm so you've got the drill, hammer and the different various saws as soon as possible. This will stop you having to grind away for resources just to craft into the components you need as you'll get so many of them components by just dismantling more. Be warned also, to gain access to another rooftop with a bunch more resources you need to build a bridge. It doesn't tell you that this is only one of maybe four or five different stages where you need a bunch of different more resources. So you might want to hold off building it as soon as you got the resources for the first stage because I think you're probably better off spending them resources on other stuff. You won't be able to get access to the following bridge of the area until you've got them foam pieces as well. Last thing to say is about the upgrades. As I said, you can get ones that increase how many planks that you can carry at a time. So you go from one to two. The non-reactive injector is probably the one that you want the most though. As that's what you're going to also need as well as the pump that you get from the trader to set up the water pumps like I said that you'll find on the rooftops. These will pump up the seawater, then you've just got to cook the water obviously to get the fresh water to use for your crops. Maybe the engineer bot can do this for you, the minion, something I'm going to test in my next video. As it's still kind of tedious pumping the water up, but it still saves time in going all the way down to the docks. Obviously the other upgrades are useful as well, specifically getting the better rod that will allow you to get more fish and then obviously you can trade them. And there's another vending machine that you come across with even more advanced items. The steel saw will help with all of that debris that's still just laying around even though you stripped it mostly all back. And you do need that to progress to maybe one of the final areas here on these benches anyway where you go through the town square. And that is almost it. Obviously this is a game about picking up items, dismantling and crafting. So that's part of the joy. So I haven't really gone into super detail about some of the components that you'll craft and make as it'll be fairly obvious once you get going. If you've got a top tip for I Am Future that I maybe should have put, then absolutely whack it in the comment section down below. I've enjoyed my time with the game. Obviously, they've got new updates in coming, I'm sure, in the coming months, adding brought more new content. So let me know if you want to see the game being covered more on the channel by leaving a like and a comment. And I'll see you right back for more top tips very soon. Bye-bye.